So let's go through the five major functions of this whole payment cycle process. You know, they don't always exist at every company, and I'll go through that in a minute, but you've got a purchase requisition, which is put together uh, for getting approval to buy something. Then ultimately a purchase order is released to go to a vendor to acquire that goods that have been approved. So there's your approval process. They could be handwritten documents. They could be a mixture of printed documents and handwritten documents. They could also be electronic with electronic workflow or approvals that happen through a system like a larger system like SAP. So that's the purchase requisition purchase order. Then when those goods come in, they're received and there'll, there'll be a receiving document related to that. And then the vendor will send an invoice. You'll get that invoice and ultimately you'll pay that invoice as long as everything has matched. And that's what this three-way match circle here means, that usually there's that three pieces that will allow a payment to happen. You've got the purchase order, which says what you're going to order and what you thought you were going to pay. The receiving document, which should correlate to the purchase order and that you ordered some items, you should receive those items. And finally, you get invoiced for those items that should be at the price you thought on the purchase order and that the quantity that you received. So that's what's the, called the three-way match. Now, where I said that this whole process can be a little bit different is some entities may not have a purchase requisition. They may start out with a purchase order. Some may not even have a purchase order uh, system. Some of the smaller companies, they may just order things and receive an invoice and pay it. So it may just be the last two steps there is all they have. So it depends on the entity you're dealing with, how big they are, what type of system they have. So these are all important things for the auditor to understand. And finally, my last point is on the invoice and payment. Usually that will require, again, a written or electronic approval. And a lot of times that comes from the accounting or finance area as far as do we have the funds to actually make that payment right now. Later on in this, I'll show you in QuickBooks how people determine whether they have the funding to actually make payments or have cash requirements met. So what are the main accounts that we're talking about in the payment cycle? Well, usually payables is the big one right there in the middle. How do things get to payables? How do things get relieved from payables? Well, first off, we're going to buy inventory. We might buy insurance ahead of time. We might buy operating items and supplies and selling administrative items. We might buy uh, things for the manufacturing process and manufacturing overhead. All these things will be bought and acquired through that purchase order process. And when they're received, they ultimately will create an accounts payable that's owed to a vendor. Now you'll notice I put a couple of terms there that you should know for the real world. One is trade payables. Trade payables usually mean anything we do for the trade or operation that we've got. So you might not see accounts payable, you'll see trade payables. There's also another account that some systems have that you should be aware of. When goods are received, but the invoice has not come in, there's an accounts payable account called received not invoice. So it's the amount of liability that the company may owe based on purchase order numbers, but an invoice hasn't come in yet. So it's kind of an important thing to note there again that you don't necessarily have to receive an invoice to have a system automatically record a liability because it will do that based on receipts. And then finally, we can relieve accounts payable through cash checks, EFTs, electronic fund transfers to vendors. A lot of auto pays are going on now. A lot of auto pays are being set up. I uh, just want to make sure all that's correct. Uh, lead done up because you don't want any audit uh, auto pays going to your employees. Um, discounts and rebates uh, for accounts payable could be applied and actually reduce the account. You could also have some product returns that would also uh, reduce that accounts payable account. We've got our audit assertions and we'll apply those to accounts payable. So you've got existence, does that accounts payable balance actually exist? More we're worried about completeness. Have they included everything in there? Does the balance include all transactions that have taken place? Don't want any missing 
accounts payable. So you'll be searching for unrecorded accounts payable and we'll go into that step in a little bit. So part of that is making sure you have the proper cutoff periods. And when you're looking at invoices, making sure that if it's a January, December, is the portion that was for the next year into next year's financials and is the portion that was for this year's financials and this year's financials. So cutoff periods on uh, invoices is very important in the payable process. Rights and obligations, is that truly an, uh, an organizational debt? Uh, make sure it's not uh, paying your employees uh, electric bills and things like that. Valuation and allocation is also important because the recorded balances that truly reflect the outstanding value of those liabilities because sometimes you'll see a payable booked or a liability booked does it actually really reflect that liability that winds up getting paid later on presentation and disclosure is always important related to uh, any of the uh, balance sheet items